there's no such thing as the perfect body. Because perfection, like art, is subjective. At birth, we are simply defined by gender, male or female. But how we appear is not always how we are. I've always considered myself heterosexual female. In my mind, I've always had a vagina, and so that needs to be congruent with who I am. You can only tell so many lies before you have to tell the truth. And, and to me, being a boy was a lie. It was. That might be the pinnacle of the transition, finding a man and falling in love and having good sex. Crossing gender is the most revealing journey of all. It was now a conspiracy of witches. Download Veely today. Anna is about to take the final radical step in her transgender journey, from male to female. I have always considered myself heterosexual female simply because my gender identity is female, and I'm attracted to guys. It doesn't matter what's on the outside, and when that's changed and right, it'll all be good. In a few days, Anna will fly to a private hospital in Montreal, Canada. One of the world's leading plastic surgeons will perform a vaginoplasty, refashioning Anna's penis into female genitals. If you can imagine being a heterosexual female with male body parts and your fantasies revolve, all your life evolve around yourself being sexual with men as, as a female, but yet you're male, it's very frustrating. And give me 10 of these total. I'm not really scared. I'm a little bit nervous. And I do have moments where I, I think I'm scared, but I'm, I'm really more excited than anything else. This is what Anna aspires to, to live without a trace of the physical baggage of the male gender, to be a complete woman. I guess growing up as Lee was, was pretty happy, but at the age of five is when I recall realizing that I didn't enjoy the things that the other boys tend to enjoy. Lee is now Elizabeth. In two years, she has undergone a complete transformation from male to female. Electrolysis to remove facial hair, hormone therapy, and plastic surgery to become the person she always knew she was. If I would have been forced to stay as Lee, I would not be alive today. It was not worth my life. I mean, it was not worth me living in such turmoil. Um, the day that I decided to actually transition was the night prior, I almost blew my brains out with my gun because I just wasn't going to deal with it again. I didn't want it anymore. Lee had a life most men would envy. Good looks and lifestyle, a loving wife and children. But Lee was living in denial. You begin to feel less and less like the person you portray. And I think that happens because you put on such an act in your life to be who you physically appear to be that eventually, it's like it's almost like a lie in your life. I'm, you can only tell so many lies before you have to tell the truth. And, and to me, being a boy was a lie, it was. For years, Lee tried to shake it off, seeking doctors and psychiatrists for help. I said, this is how I feel. And they said, well, what do you want us to do? I said, you know, if you can give me a magic pill or you can give me something to wear, I will never consider changing genders. I mean, look what I have. I have beautiful children. I have a beautiful wife. You know, the last thing I want to do is ruin that. And she risked losing everything to find herself. It was worth everything to look in the mirror and see somebody different, but still kind of the same, to know it's still me. You know, it was just simply, you know what? 
this is what your life should have been, and this is what your life is going to be from now on out. Elizabeth's story is not unusual. To the people that do want to understand this, I think that they need to understand primarily that there's a difference between our gender identity, body sex, and sexual preference. I think that's a key aspect of understanding this and knowing that this is something that we're born with and it does not go away and it's what makes us unique. I can't imagine anyone really understanding it because myself, I almost don't understand it still and I've been living it for 25, 30 years, consciously aware of it. Anna is approaching the defining moment in her life. She's going to one of the world's leading sex change surgeons, but there are no guarantees with any surgery and she knows that this operation is irreversible. Anna is about to risk everything to change her life. The day that you start your hormones is the day that you really have to start thinking about your future. Eventually you have to inform the people in your family. You have to tell people what's going on in your life because these changes are going to be subtle at first, but you know, eventually they're going to really start to flare out here. Anna has spent her life trying to live with the body she was born with. But she knew all along she was female. Yeah, when I get out of the shower or go to the bathroom, especially in a public place, it's very discomforting to see something extra down there that's a very manly thing to have. That I just don't feel belongs. It just doesn't feel like a part of me, and it doesn't feel right. It's, it's like the last piece of me that once it's fixed, I'll be complete and I'll just feel like a whole person for, for the first time in my life. Because it really reminds me of who I'm not. And the fact that it can be changed into something that I am is just beyond, uh, beyond imagination. When she goes to Montreal to surgically change her body from male to female, Anna won't be alone. She'll be taking a special person for support her ex-wife, Cindy. We didn't think it was normal. We thought it was better than normal. We felt we were soulmates, and we kind of, when we, we got together so young that we fell so deeply in love, and we kind of turned our backs to the world and focused on each other. That's what made it so difficult when this all came up. beginning, Anna was Adam. Cindy was his teenage sweetheart. They married young and had a son. Very loving, considerate, funny, happy, yet with bursts of anger from the internal frustration. But as a father, very attentive and interested and awesome. <laughs> But for Adam, now Anna, the picture was not perfect. You push hard to be the man, you know, to get married and have kids and, you know, join the army. A lot of people join the forces or become firemen, just trying to prove to ourselves more than the world that we're masculine and we're men. But that really tends to backfire on us. And anyone who says it doesn't backfire, I think, is kidding themselves because it does. And that's when it's the hardest on us. It's because we realize once again that I'm not being true to who I really am. But that's a scary thing to try to be true to, you know, because it means changing everything about your life, every single thing. Perhaps the most painful change of all was for Cindy. The man she married, the father of her son, was suddenly on the path to becoming a woman. Well, it's two different things understand and deal with. Intellectually, I understood it. Emotionally dealing with it is a completely different thing. Uh, as a spouse, a broken spouse, feeling like we shared everything, how, how did this secret get through, and such a big one, such a core secret, you know, feeling betrayed and hurt and angry, 
And then the whole other set of feelings of, you know, this is my best friend and here's a path to make you not angry and to heal. So feeling happy for that person. So dealing with it was a very long, strenuous, arduous, excruciating process at times. That was. Their marriage is over, but the friendship endures yeah, as real. Anna faces an operation that will end his life as a man. It's called a vaginoplasty. The procedure consists of um, changing the male genitals into female genitals. Female genitals that are functional, uh, functional meaning good sensation and capacity for orgasms and intercourse. Dr. Pierre Broussard is one of the world's leading sex reassignment surgeons. Our clinic performs probably around 250. Uh, SRS, sex reassignment surgeries, per year. The demand here is great. Not many surgeons do these procedures. So we have a long waiting list uh, because uh, patients know we're reliable, we get good results, and also they're taken care of uh, from the beginning uh, when they arrive in Montreal. This is Anna's second to last day as a biological man. It's even more beautiful Gosh. here than I was led to believe. Yeah. What a beautiful little building. Wow. Convalescence. La Maison de Yale. After checking in to the Montreal Clinic's residence, Anna will meet her surgeon for the first time. After that, there will be no turning back. <laughs> for me, sexuality has a lot to do with the need for surgery because I just want to be female and I want to be with guys, you know? I guess if I wanted to be with girls, I might consider keeping it, but still I don't think I would be complete because I wouldn't be fully me. Anna's wait is almost over. Sex reassignment surgery will resolve the gender conflict she's been living with for 38 years. I love putting makeup on. It's a lot of fun. It's like a metamorphosis. It's always a good spot to start anyway, you know, for making yourself feel different or more confident. I used to feel like I couldn't go anywhere without it at all. It's kind of like a crutch in a way. Yeah, sometimes it blows my mind that people don't take a second look at me and wonder. I'm really lucky, but it hasn't been easy to get where I'm at. It's something that people who I know now never see is the misery that I used to go through every day, 24 hours a day, just because I wasn't being true to who I am. Aside from the emotional cost of coming out, crossing gender is expensive. A complete transformation, male to female, can cost upwards of $50,000. It's the constant electrolysis is the constant laser is the constant psychiatric um, you know going to the doctor to see to get your hormones that alone cost me uh, $240 a month we didn't advertise at all I have spent several thousand dollars on transitioning but I think it's been far less than some people have had to spend I spent a few thousand dollars on electrolysis, which is really where the major amounts of money have gone. I haven't had any surgeries yet, so I've been very lucky in that regard. There is no way that Anna, a struggling musician, could afford the surgery she needs to complete her transition to womanhood. It sent her into depression. Then along came help from an unexpected source. We didn't have anything. I was looking at my life and what I was doing and how much money I wasn't making and realizing there's no way I'm going to be able to afford $12,000 for this. That's just more than I can scrape up, you know. So I got quite depressed and then out of the blue my parents called me and 
some good things had come their way financially, so they had talked about it for a few months and said, we really want to do something for you and we'd like to offer to pay for your surgery. And I was driving my car and on the cell phone then, and I about wrecked. I couldn't believe it. It's just incredible. They gave me life to begin with, but they really gave me a second life by doing this for me. I really can't believe that I'm gonna do this tomorrow. Well, I can believe it, but it's just, it's quite amazing. Yeah. Well, some men have actually told me I can't imagine cutting off my penis. And I've told them, well, it's not a cutting off of the penis, you know, for me. It's a complete reconstruction into what my mind thinks is there. When Cindy first heard about Anna's decision to have surgery, she was at first shocked that her ex-husband was taking the final irreversible step. Anna didn't tell me. She told my mother that she was going to get the surgery. And my mother ended up telling me. I went into shock and tears flowed down my face. But it was like the final goodbye, you know? It's kind of like mourning a death. It goes in stages. Initially, you go through the shock, and then the denial, and then anger, and then acceptance. But rather than dwell on the loss of the man of her life, Cindy has come to Montreal to support her closest friend. She's part of my family, and when I love someone, I love them forever. So I didn't want her to be alone in a different country for 13 days having major surgery and, you know, do unto others. In Montreal, Dr. Broussard's clinic doesn't promise miracles, but it does change lives. You know, we receive wedding invitations and calls. Uh, oh, doctor, I had my first orgasm. I'm so happy about this. Other times, patients will tell me, uh, doctor, you saved my life. It's great to have this kind of comment, but at the same time, I'll always tell them, you saved your life yourself. You did it. Uh, I did the surgery for you. So uh, it's, it's simpler than what it is. So it's, it, it's that I get this every week. You saved my life. So plastic surgeons really rarely save lives. After putting herself in Dr. Broussard's hands, Anna is about to find out what her new life holds. Two days after surgery, Anna has passed the first test of recovery. I'm feeling awesome. I feel a lot better than I thought I would feel, you know, two days after such major surgery. I feel a, a clarity that I've never felt before. From here, I think I'm just gonna finally go with my own flow and feel, feel unencumbered by the disconnection between my brain and my body. I think that's gonna really just open me up to let me just finally be free to not be stuck thinking, oh, this should be different and this should be fixed. You know, now that everything is taken care of, I can just use 100% of my brain power and self to do the things I love to do. The ultimate goal is to heal, start living life in what I believe is a normal way for myself, and to become a rock star. <laughs> no. Well, yeah. I mean, my real goal is to become a successful musician, and I hope to do that with the band I'm in now. Teach music, teach guitar, and just keep doing what I love to do. Two months after the operation, Anna reported that she was fully recovered and completely satisfied with the results. She's now a single woman with a whole new world at her feet. Actually, that might be the pinnacle of the transition, finding a man and falling in love and having good sex. Although that's not going to be a quest of mine, I think it's more of a if I find him or he finds me or our paths cross, you know, then that'll be awesome. But 
I do have a lot of other things on my plate too, the band and my music and art and the things that I do that I won't sacrifice just for the sake of finding someone else, you know, and I don't want to just go out and start having sex with just any guy, you know, because it's not about just sex, it's, it's about the relationship and the understanding and he's going to know about me and he has to know about me before we can do anything together. So I think there's going to have to be a very special guy out there that's going to be able to accept that.